Stop making these RAM mistakes. Let's get you the best RAM for gaming 2022. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now probably the single most confusing part of building a PC or upgrading one is the RAM. RAM is complicated and because it's not as cool as the graphics card or CPU, people don't take the time to get a basic understanding of it. But there's nothing worse than spending all your money on a GPU and CPU then losing a massive amount of FPS by making basic RAM mistakes. So we're gonna tell you what you need to know to buy the best RAM for gaming in 2022, including specific product recommendations for Ryzen and Intel systems. If you get value out of the video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. Subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Let's start off with the basics where I see a lot of RAM mistakes. Now RAM is the memory used by your system to do everything right now. This is different from storage like SSDs, which store your data long term. The modern implementation of RAM is double data rate or DDR memory, meaning we transfer information two times during each clock cycle. Here's where so many get it wrong. The speed of the RAM is not in megahertz, but in mega transfers. So even though you buy 3200 speed RAM, it runs at a clock speed of 1600 megahertz, which we then multiply by two because it transfers data twice per clock cycle, and we get the 3200 mega transfer speed of the memory. Now you'll hear people mistakenly refer to memory speed in megahertz so often that I don't even bother to correct it anymore. But here's where it is important. When you're looking at diagnostic software or in the BIOS, a lot of people will see their 3200 speed memory kit running at 1600 megahertz and think something's wrong when in fact it's running correctly because it's double data rate. So. Hopefully that saves you frustration trying to troubleshoot something that isn't broken. So that's how RAM speed works. But what about that other number after the speed, the cast latency? Cast latency, often abbreviated as CL or C, followed by a number, is the number of clock cycles it takes to get the requested data from the RAM. Now the smaller the cast latency means that data can be retrieved in fewer clock cycles, which is good. So generally when you're looking at RAM kits, Higher speed is better and lower cast latency is also better, but just know that the faster the speed of the memory, often the looser the timings or higher the cast latency has to be in order to make the kit work. The most commercially available DDR4 kits are 3200 CL16, 3600 speed at either CL16 or CL18, and 4000 speed memory at either CL16 or CL18. Now note there are many other timings associated with RAM, but I just recommend you ignore them unless you're planning to manually overclock your memory. Speaking of overclocking, every RAM kit you see is designed to be overclocked automatically using a manufacturer specified profile called XMP, and that's short for Extreme Memory Profile. Now here's where it can get a little confusing, so pay very close attention. Because XMP was developed by Intel, and AMD motherboard vendors didn't want to pay Intel royalties to use XMP on AMD motherboards, they came up with their own ways of utilizing it called DOCP or EOCP. Just know that for practical purposes, if you see DOCP or EOCP in your motherboard BIOS, it's essentially the same thing as XMP. So Jason, you said that the memory automatically overclocks. Do I just need to plug it in and I'm good to go? Well, that would be really nice, wouldn't it? But no, you absolutely need to go into the BIOS for your motherboard and activate the XMP profile. Now this is done most easily on the easy BIOS settings available on most motherboards. You can typically do it in one click right there. Just know that if you don't do this, your memory is going to run at its regular speed, which is very, very slow until you enable XMP. Quick note, if you're looking to upgrade the memory on a pre-built gaming PC that uses proprietary or non-standard parts from a company like Dell, for instance, the BIOS of many of those proprietary systems does not support XMP or any form of automatic overclocking profiles, which heavily limits compatibility. So if you do own one of those OEM pre-built systems that doesn't use off-the-shelf parts, you should check your motherboard and BIOS manual before buying RAM. So now we understand how RAM works and how to avoid major mistakes. Let's talk about how to buy the best RAM for gaming 2022. Now, first off, you wanna make sure to buy your memory in a kit of either two or four sticks. This is gonna ensure that you're using two sticks per channel or what's called dual channel. Using a single stick of RAM can limit your FPS by up to 20% 
and it greatly reduces 1% FPS lows due to higher system latency. One quick note here is that technically, a stick of desktop PC RAM is called a DIMM, or D-I-M-M, -M. but I'm just gonna keep calling them sticks for simplicity as this video is just about desktop memory. Second, let's talk about DDR4 versus DDR5. Now, as we recall, DDR simply stands for double data rate memory, and the number afterwards refers to the generation. So DDR4 is the fourth generation of double data rate memory, and DDR5 is the fifth generation of double data rate memory. Now DDR5 is very new, and at the time of filming, only 12th gen Intel CPUs can use it, and only if they buy a motherboard specifically designed to run with DDR5. Everything else currently on the market, that's Ryzen 5000, 4000, 3000, as well as 10th and 11th generation Intel CPUs, uses DDR4 memory. 12th gen Intel CPUs also use DDR4 as long as you can make sure to purchase with a board that works with it. Ryzen 7000 CPUs launching in the fall will be DDR5 only. Now because DDR5 is so new, it's super high priced. And while Intel's 12th generation CPUs can use it, as usual with a new technology, it actually doesn't perform as well in gaming as the more mature and much cheaper DDR4 memory. So until Ryzen 7000 or Intel 13th generation CPUs come out with a better memory controller for DDR5, you can just ignore DDR5 and focus on DDR4. Okay, so we know we want DDR4 at higher speeds and lower latency, so we should just go out and buy the fastest memory kit we can get, right? Actually, that's wrong. I know it's confusing, right? But there's two reasons why. The first is price to performance. Because faster memory, it costs more money. But is it worth the price increase or should you spend that money upgrading something else? In reviewing many third-party gaming tests and conducting several myself detailed in other videos, the answer is that with the current generation of GPUs, the RTX 3000 series and the Radeon RX 6000 series, we only see differences of about 5-7% to FPS in games when using an RTX 3080 or faster GPU and gaming at 1080p, mostly in competitive shooters. For the vast majority of gamers at 1080p using a mid-tier or below GPU or gamers playing at 1440p or higher resolution where the GPU is the bottleneck, not the CPU, we do not see a gaming performance increase after 3200 CL16 memory. But we're nearing the introduction of the next generation of GPUs, which are reported to be 80 to 120% faster, so it is possible faster memory will have benefits in the near future if you're planning on buying one of the next gen GPUs. Secondly, there is an upper speed limit to running memory as well. In both AMD and Intel systems, we want to run the memory controller at the same speed as the memory itself. Now that's called running one-to-one -one or running synchronously. While in theory, AMD's controller can run up to 2000 megahertz, so with DDR4 memory, that's 4000 megatransfer speed memory, sometimes it can struggle to hit that speed. Similarly, we wanna run in what Intel calls gear one, which is the one-to-one -one speed with the memory controller. But Intel systems can also struggle to run memory in gear one using XMP profiles that are faster than 3600 speed. So for less experienced users, I'd suggest 3600 speed as the top end, with 4000 speed fine for more advanced users who don't mind troubleshooting compatibility issues. So how much memory do you need for gaming? Well, the great news here is that 16 gigabytes in a two by eight gigabyte kit is really all you need for gaming. If you wanna have a lot of other tabs and other things running while you're gaming, you might consider 32 gigabytes, but just know that all that other stuff you have open while gaming is taking CPU and possibly graphics card resources away from your game, not just system memory. So I recommend playing the game with non-essential applications closed. And that's why 16 gigabytes of RAM remains my recommendation here for gaming focused builds. If you also do professional level creator work like video editing, 32 gigabytes is typically the minimum I recommend, but you should check the system recommendations for the programs you use as they vary widely. There's one more technical factor to consider, which is whether or not the memory you get is dual rank, not to be confused with dual channel, which is just having an even number of sticks. Dual rank has to do with the memory chips on the stick itself. Now, single rank memory accesses all the chips on the stick simultaneously, hence the name single rank. 
Dual rank memory sticks essentially have two banks of memory that can be accessed separately, which slightly improves performance about three to 5%, possibly more, depending on the application or game. Now, if you want a deeper dive on how this works, I'll leave a link to an Igor's Lab article on it in the video description below. So, how do you get dual rank? Well, either you buy a two stick kit that's designed to be dual rank, or you get four sticks of single rank memory, which acts like dual rank kits. Since almost all eight gigabyte sticks are single rank, that means you can only get dual rank sticks if getting sticks that are at least 16 gigabytes in size or larger. So then at a minimum, you have a total system RAM of 32 gigabytes or more. And just to make things extra confusing, while most 16 gigabyte sticks used to come dual rank, due to the silicon shortage, many of the memory vendors started making them single rank. So it's almost impossible to tell which 16 gigabyte sticks will come dual rank as sometimes even two kits with the same model number ordered at different times will come with different ranks. So to ensure you get it, you should get four sticks of eight gigabytes for 32 gigabytes total. You can either order a four by eight gigabyte kit or by buying two of the same two by eight gigabyte kits at the same time. Just know that using four sticks of memory instead of two is a little harder on the memory controller. So there is a chance of this reducing compatibility the faster the memory is. In my opinion, just for gaming, it's not worth chasing dual rank as it requires you to buy 32 gigabytes of total memory instead of just the needed 16 gigabytes. That is money that is better spent on a faster GPU, CPU, better motherboard, quieter cooler, more SSD storage for your games, or better ventilated PC case, all of which will likely net you more performance or enjoyability. Quick Intel reminder because they make memory so complicated, if you're using a 10th or 11th generation Intel CPU, you will need a B560 or Z series motherboard to overclock those or set XMP profiles above the slower speeds that they've set. Or if you're using 12th gen, just know that the H610 motherboards will not allow you to apply XMP profiles above 3200 speed. So choose your motherboard carefully. Let's jump into some specific product recommendations and we'll start at the low end and work our way up. Remember links for everything is gonna be down in the video description. There'll be links to Amazon, Newegg and others. Uh, check the pricing. Sometimes memory prices change and it might make sense for you to spend a little bit more if it's only a couple bucks. But starting at the lower end, for those of you who are playing 1080p, primarily using a mid-tier GPU from this generation or lower, and you don't plan to get a nice shiny GPU when they launch in the fall, that's the RTX 4000 series or the RTX uh, 7000 series at the high end, remember the high end, then uh, absolutely 3200 CL16 is all you need and 16 gigabytes is all you need in a two by eight gigabyte kit. Now we have found that 3200 is about the floor. You don't really wanna go any slower. So you don't really wanna shave off another dollar or two by going 3000 speed memory. And these silicon power kits for about $50 I found are really, really beneficial. Again, links to these are gonna be down in the video description, check them out. If you're looking for something with RGB, for only 10 bucks more, you can get a really nice RGB kit. We use this in our i5-12400 build video. We also use this in our 5600G build video. This kit looks really, really nice, but you can typically pick up the ARGB kits for about $10 more. So you're looking to spend about 60 to $65 here. If you do wanna jump up in memory speed, maybe you wanna future proof a little bit when you get a new GPU, maybe in the fall, if you're just planning to get one of the faster ones, or if you've got a faster GPU at the higher end right now and you're playing in 1080p you're looking to push a lot of frames I would recommend for a no fuss solution with no real compatibility issues you go for 3600 CL16 memory I'd skip right over 3600 CL18 it's about the same speed as the 3200 CL16 memory kits so just jump all the way up if you're gonna spend an extra 30 or 40 bucks go ahead and get the good stuff, 3600 CL16. Ripjaw's got a, a nice kit here. You can find them right now for about $80. The, the price of this memory does fluctuate quite a bit more than the 3200 CL16 stuff, just uh, lots of it out there, I think. But overall, 80 bucks, not a bad price for it for 16 gigabytes. If you're looking for something with RGB on it, uh, for about $100, $95, we got the Corsair Vengeance RGB, nice kit. Again, I'll leave links to several kits down in the video description below that you can check out. While we're here, I do want to address a kind of kit of memory that I get questions about all the time, which is 3200 CL14. 
and people are like, well, that's what all the testers use. They use 3200CL14. There's some very specific reasons that I'm not gonna get into right now that testers use that. Primarily compatibility, just works with everything. So the problem with the 3200CL14 memory kits is I know everyone's so excited about them. They don't really perform any differently than 3600CL16 kits and they cost a whole lot more because they're kind of rare. They're, they're basically a rare tuning. So here's one for $130. This is about what you're gonna pay for 16 gigabytes. Now those, look, it's a nice RGB G-Skill kit, but it's 30 bucks more than the kit we just looked at that's gonna run just as fast at 3600CL16. So I'm not sure why you would get this. But what if you absolutely want all the maximum performance to the point of total overkill? Maybe you've got a 6950 XT, maybe you're gonna go out and buy an RTX 4090 when they release, and you just wanna get your system ready right now. Well, yes, you can go out and you can buy a kit like a DDR4 4000 CL16 kit, and I would go CL16. Yes, there is CL18 memory out there for a little bit cheaper, but you're already past the point of uh, you know diminishing returns. Why not just spend a couple extra bucks more and get the good stuff, right? So for about 130 to 140, 150 dollars ish, you can typically find a non RGB kit two by 16 gigabytes. Now, if you're also committed to getting dual rank, I would buy two of these kits and buy them at the same time. And it's more than likely you're going to get two kits manufactured at the same time. Uh, the serial numbers are usually like one or two away from each other when you get them. That's to me the best way to guarantee it. You can buy kits that are like four by eight gigabytes that are specifically packaged as such, but they cost so much more money, sometimes twice as much as simply buying two kits. Similar to the other kits, if you are looking for RGB with that as well, you can typically find it for about $20, $25 more. G-Skill offers a number of these kits. You often see them from uh, Corsair, uh, other typical brands out there. And just remember, if you are having problems with compatibility in this memory, uh, especially when you have four sticks, you're really pushing that memory controller hard, you may need to back off on the speed a little bit. 3800 might be a good manual timing if you know how to do that, or even loosening up the cast latency to something like 4000 CL18. However, now we're getting into manual tuning, which this video is not about, but just some potential guidance out there if you do run into some issues trying to push this super fast memory. Mr. Bear. Kitty. Remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. One of the coolest content out there, of course, is what's the best graphics card for gaming? What's the best GPU for gaming? We're gonna put up the video right here. We go through everything you need to know to buy the best GPU for gaming in 2022, and we'll catch you on the next one.